What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the Hornet for yet another video. In this one, we're going to take a look at air-to-air -air refueling, also known as mid-air refueling. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, in a realistic mission, uh, flying a jet like the Hornet, you could be expected to be in the air for several hours, believe it or not. The Hornet's internal fuel, and even fuel with external tanks on, isn't really enough to stay in the air for that long. You know, the Hornet is a pretty small jet, so its fuel tanks aren't as big. It's not like we're flying a 747 here with enough fuel to take us around the planet once or twice. So the Hornet has to be able to refuel in mid-air so that it can stay airborne and it can stay on mission and on station longer. So the way we're going to do this is we're first going to do a couple of things. We first want to make sure our master arm switch is safe and that we are not in any air-to-air -air or air-to-ground master mode and that we don't have any weapons selected whatsoever. The last thing we want to do is shoot down the tanker by mistake, uh, unless we're Saber Squadron. We also want to uh, throw our radar into standby mode so that we are not microwaving the refueling tanker's pilots. So that uh, will we'll be nice to them. They are giving us gas so that we can stay in the air. We should be nice to them and not, uh, you know, kill them with radio waves. Next thing we need to do is actually locate the refueling tanker. So for the most part, um, we're going to be using air-to-air -air TACAN for this. So let's go down to our UFC here. We're going to press our TACAN button. Uh, let's check our mission briefing real quick to get the TACAN information for Texaco is going to be our tanker today. So his TACAN code is 10X-Ray. So we're going to put in one, zero, enter. We're going to switch it to air to air mode by selecting this push button here. Make that a little brighter. And we're going to toggle our tack in on. Now, if we look over at our right side DDI, we can see a tack in symbol over here. This is an indication of where the refueling tanker actually is, and it's a moving TACAN, so unlike a ground-based TACAN where it won't move, the aerial-based TACAN will move around, so we will have to adjust to follow it. So let's actually get over to where the tanker is. He's actually about 20, 25, 30-ish miles away from us right now. Uh, so let's get over to where he is and see if we can't get into formation with him. While we're flying towards the tanker, uh, one other thing we can do to get set up and just to help us throughout the process, if we look over at our left side DDI here and we go over to our support page, there is a page we haven't talked about yet labeled Fuel. We open this up. This gives us a really good top-down look at all of our internal fuel stores as well as our external fuel stores. So we can see I have a total right now of 7,900 pounds internal of 7,900 pounds, and this matches the IFE fuel indicator down here. So that those match up is very good. We again also see the status of the individual internal fuel tanks and fuel feeders. We also down below see the external tanks. So for example, right now I only have a center line tank, which is currently empty. So you'll see center line here. If I had left and right wing tanks, you'd see them here and here with the amount of fuel left within them. So the fuel page is very good because it puts the uh, current fuel total that we have more into our field of view. And when we're actually doing the refueling, uh, we are going to have to keep our eyes outside the cockpit for the, for the most part because we essentially have to fly in a very, very tight formation with a tanker in order to actually receive the fuel. So let's, uh, I see the tanker actually out in the distance over there, so let's um, continue to get uh, closer to him. And once we're set up behind him, we will continue. 
Okay, so we're behind the tanker now. We're, you know, about a quarter mile behind him here. Um, he's doing about 260 some odd knots, so I'm going to try to match his speed as best I can. Uh, one other thing we need to do to actually receive the fuel is we need to open our refueling probe. Now there is a switch down here labeled probe, and you can click that forward to extend the probe, and you can see the probe is actually popping out right here. Alternatively, you can also bind this to a HOTAS button, and I highly recommend doing that because it's a lot easier to access than looking down to have to find that switch. And when you're in close formation to another aircraft, it's very helpful. Now to actually receive fuel, we need to first contact this tanker. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our comms menu. I have auto communications on. Um, the tanker will have a frequency that he is listening on. So if auto, uh, if easy communications, excuse me, are off in whatever mission you're playing, you do need to tune his frequency first. But uh, just to make things easier for us, we're leaving auto communications on. So I'm going to go tanker. And this is Texaco, so we're going to go Texaco, and then intent to refuel. Texaco, 6, 2, 1, request rejoin. 6, 2, 1, Texaco, proceed to pre-contact at 12,000. So he has responded to us, saying proceed to pre-contact at 12,000. So what does that mean? Pre-contact is a region behind him you know, roughly a couple of hundred feet in very close formation. And at that point, we can say we are ready pre-contact, and then he will give us clearance to actually uh, intercept the refueling probe. So what I'm doing is I'm speeding up a little bit to get real close behind him here. And you can actually see the refueling uh, drogues that are hanging behind his aircraft. So I'm actually going to get in nice and close to maybe about here. I'm going to try to match his speed. He's doing about 260 knots. We're about matched with his speed. You do need to be pretty close before he will actually agree to refuel you. So let's uh, get in just a little bit closer. Okay. And uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn my controls indicator on because I want you to see something. When we're actually refueling, um, my controls are going to be constantly moving because you're going to be making very, very small corrections in your formation with the tanker at all times while you're in contact with the drogue. There is at no point where you should ever take your hands off the controls and your controls should always be moving. And the trick is always going to be very, very small corrections. All right, we're in a good position now, so I'm going to say ready pre-contact. Okay, he has cleared us for contact, so we're going to advance the throttles a bit and fly towards the basket. And what I'm actually doing now is I am not looking at the basket. I am instead looking at that little pod that the basket is hanging from. You want to look at a specific spot on the tanker aircraft instead of the basket itself so that you can... Oh, give me a break little bug with the KC-130. All right, so we have contacted. Now, I am not looking at the basket. I am not looking at the basket. I am watching the little pod. And I'm making very small corrections. You know, drift down, give it a little up. Keeping the throttles moving, making small corrections to the throttles. If I look like I'm drifting back a little bit, give it a little power and then reduce the power almost immediately. This will take a lot of practice. Um, the Hornet, thankfully, with its fly-by-wire system, does give you a little bit of an edge, but you do have to be on the ball, and um, it will take some time to get right. It took me quite a while to air-to-air -air refuel effectively and successfully. And uh, I'm drifting a little bit here. It's very easy to slip into PIO, pilot-induced oscillation. So you're going up, you're going down, you're overcorrecting. That's called PIO, pilot-induced oscillation. You want to avoid that as much as possible. So I'm uh, actually doing a pretty good job here. <laughs> Usually 
when I'm doing this. Uh, it's not really very easy for me to talk while I'm doing this. So, you know, we're doing all right. So quick glance down at our fuel total. We're at about 11,000 pounds. It is also filling my external tank. So bear that in mind. If you are refueling with empty external tanks on board, the tanker will refuel those as well. 12,000 pounds, about 13,000 will be full. Almost there. Keeping eyes on that pod, not the basket, just the pod. And there we are, we are full. So I'm gonna pull the throttles back a bit just to back away. Going to close my refueling probe. And then I can turn away. And if I had buddies that needed to refuel, proper etiquette would be to slot uh, off to the side and wait for them to refuel. But for me, I can just turn away and get back to my mission going to do whatever it is that I needed to do. So that's pretty much it. That's the basics of air to air refueling. Um, I probably made that look a lot easier than it really is. But uh, like I said, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of patience. You are going to fail at this quite a bit. I can all but guarantee you will fail at this quite a bit. You will crash into the tanker. You will accidentally shoot the tanker. You will shoot the tanker down in frustration. I have been there. I have done that. It's all part of the learning process for air-to-air -air refueling in any aircraft, not just the Hornet. Um, you know, the tips I've kind of outlined uh, for keeping your hands moving, making very small corrections while you're actually in contact with the basket or the boom in some cases, if you're flying something like the F-16, um, is very much, very much... Uh, holds true for any aircraft that can air-to-air -air refuel. Small corrections, keep your eyes on a fixed point on the tanker. In my case, I used that little uh, pod that the drogue actually was hanging from. And uh, yeah, with some practice, it will become second nature, but it is, it is one of the hardest things you can do, uh, probably next to landing on the aircraft carrier. So uh, videos on that coming soon, by the way. That's it for me, guys. Uh, get out there and practice your air-to-air -air refueling uh, and really practice it. It's going to take a lot of effort and patience, but uh, I'm confident you guys will get there. And as always, I will see you guys for the next video. So take care.